Dr. Ngozi Okanjo Oela is a renowned global finance expert, an economist, and an international development professional with more than 30 years' experience working on five of the seven continents around the world. Being the first woman and the first African means that one really has to perform. I've always said these are wonderful things, it's groundbreaking. Uh, all credit to members for electing me and making that history. But the bottom line is that if I want to really make Africa and women proud, I have to produce results. And that's where my mind is at now. Famous for her courageous work as finance minister of Nigeria, Dr. Ngozi dealt with the effects of corruption, including the kidnapping of her own mother. She is the definition of bravery and resilience. Choosing a DGWTO should be on merit. If that person happens to be a woman, great. If she happens to be African, great. I hope it's a sign not only to women and girls in my country, but to women and girls worldwide, that the world is ready and women can do it. Dr. Ngozi is a tireless advocate for change and continues to be an example and beacon of hope for women everywhere and for the next generation. And above all, we have to engage our young people. We have genius in our young people. I see it every day. It's what makes me wake up in the morning and feel ready to go. We have to unleash the genius of our young people, get out of their way, support them to create and innovate and lead the way. And I know that they'll lead us in the right direction. To present the Distinguished International Leadership Award, please welcome American University President, the Honorable Sylvia M. Burwell. Thank you, it's an honor to be here. I am particularly proud to celebrate the first all women slate of Atlantic Council Distinguished Leadership Awardees. I have had the honor of knowing Dr. Ngozi Ankojo Iwele for over two decades. We first crossed paths when she was the finance minister of Nigeria and I was working at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And we collaborated to improve health and increase economic well-being on the continent of Africa and beyond. And since then, we've had the opportunity to work together on many other economic and health issues. And over the course of our friendship, I have been lucky to bear witness to her dedication to service, her incredible range of abilities and talents, and her warmth as a human being. And Gozi and I recently sat down together for a discussion at AU School of International Service. And during our conversation, she reflected on her childhood growing up in Nigeria, raised in her early years, by a grandmother who taught her that our worth in life is defined by how we serve our community. She shared how this belief has always led her to ask this one simple question before taking on a new task. How will this help others? Ngozi has carried that commitment to community through her time when she first came to the United States as a teenager to go to school, through to her work as a two-time finance minister in Nigeria and foreign minister, the first female in both positions. Her 25 years of impact and record-breaking at the World Bank included the $49 billion International Development Association replenishment of concessional resources to assist poor countries. Her contributions to United Nations and G20 commissions as chair of the board of Gavi, her many academic achievements, and her role as a mother and grandmother, and now as the director general of the World Trade Organization. As the leader of the WTO, she is committed to ensuring that the preeminent global trade organization works to enhance living standards, to help create employment, and support sustainable development. She is a global visionary who believes that trade can help women and other marginalized populations beat inequality, and that the WTO has an important role in increasing economic well-being for all. 
It is truly my honor to present my friend, Dr. Ngozi Onkojo Iwela, with the Atlantic Council's 2023 Distinguished International Leadership Award. Welcome. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you, Sylvia. That was really beautiful. You yourself, you are a prime example of the kind of leader that women and girls look up to. I want to start by thanking my family, because I wouldn't be here today without their love and support. And I have today my sister, Dr. Njide Odochi, my son, Okechukwe Wala, and my indefatigable advisor, Nicole Mensah. Thank you for being here with me today. <clears throat> Chairman Rogers, President Kemp, dear Fred, thank you so much for this recognition by the Atlantic Council. Thank you for the work you do to make the world a better place. And thank you in particular for the work you're doing in Africa with Ramayade, trying to look at the glass half full rather than the glass half empty, at the innovation, the creativity, and the wellspring of knowledge in the continent. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's wonderful to be here tonight, and when I see familiar faces like Luis Alberto, like Milan, it really makes me feel at home. Thank you for this immense honor. I'm humbled to share this podium with the sterling cast of women that we've seen today. I don't know if Avril Haines remembers, but when I was competing for the job of WTO, I had the occasion to ask her for advice. I was introduced to her by someone, and she was absolutely supportive and helpful. Thank you. We live in an, a, a, what feels like an era of an ending crisis. When I talk to young people, they're on edge. Instead of hope, there is fear. Fear for a future of uncertain jobs, climate crisis, and geopolitical tensions that could escalate into catastrophe. In this kind of world, we all need to sit up and take action. We must believe that there's still reason and room for hope, that there's a more prosperous, more sustainable future for people everywhere. In a world of doom and gloom, we must remember the positives. So my message to you this evening is that in our uncertain world, we need multilateralism more than ever. We need places where nations can come together and truly interact even when they disagree. In fact, especially when they disagree. The World Trade Organization is one such arena, a platform where nations, including the United States and China, are able to engage on the trading relationships that deliver benefits to and connect the lives of billions of people each day. We need to shore up the multilateral institutions we have instead of taking for granted the services they provide. Yes, of course, these multilateral institutions, the WTO included, need to be reformed to be fit for purpose for the 21st century. But we must bear in mind the good they've done for three quarters of a century. This cannot be wished away. The WTO and its predecessor, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, GATT, 
helped deliver 75 years of what by historic standards has been an era of peace and unprecedented prosperity. Over a billion people were lifted out of poverty, not only in China, but elsewhere. Trade helped deliver decades of disinflation for central banks and brought a wider selection of more affordable goods to consumers in the US and around the world. Yes, there were job losses, but not all were due to trade. Technology played a large part, as did the failure in some countries to deploy active labor market and social policies on the necessary scale to deal with dislocation. At the WTO, some of our biggest successes go almost unnoticed. For instance, our information technology agreement, which is very popular with the business community, especially the semiconductor industry, has eliminated tariffs on what in 2021 was close to $3 trillion worth of trade in products like servers, manufacturing equipment, computers, and mobile phones. The physical goods and capital investment that powered the digital economy would be significantly more expensive without it. So if we let multilateral fora wither, if we fail to preserve what they are doing well and improve what needs improving, the costs will be high. From our trade perspective, some of these costs are quantifiable. For instance, WTO economists estimate that if the world economy decouples into two isolated trading blocks, it would reduce long-term global GDP by at least 5% from the current trend. That's a much bigger hit to output than what advanced economies sustained after the global financial crisis. And we know how that played out. Poor countries and their development aspirations would be hit hardest. So my message to you today is to support multilateralism. Support strategic interdependence, not overdependence. Back the WTO to complete the reforms it's now undertaking to be fit for the 21st century. And the multilateral trading system, underpinned by a reformed WTO, can continue to deliver for the world. I want to thank the members of the WTO for their work, my staff in Geneva, and all of you for making this possible today. Thank you, thank you so much from the heart.